Hi, welcome to the week two lecture. This week I'd like to talk about um, metaphorical thinking. <clears throat> Objective 2.1 for week two is to apply critical and creative thinking to solve problems related to behavior and mental processes. And, you know, so I want to at least give one example. What does that really mean in practice? And so one example is metaphorical thinking. And so metaphors can provide really creative ways to solve problems because when you really listen to people speak, especially inside organizations, they have a tendency to speak within metaphors. And the metaphors provide both meaning and insight to how the person is thinking. Um, <clears throat> they provide us, the metaphors provide a structure or a framework for how the problem is viewed. And of course, the disadvantage is the metaphor or is the map is not the territory, the metaphor is not the reality, it's just a representation. And so, what that does, it actually limits thinking within the boundaries of the metaphor, but in reality, their thinking is really not limited. So, if we hear someone speaking, and thinking through with metaphorical thinking, and we change their metaphor, then we've also changed their uh, possibilities. Now, I want to talk about a few uh, common metaphors. Um, Morgan identified some common metaphors in organization, which I'm sure that you've heard of these. Uh, for example, the organization as a machine. It was derived from uh, Frederick Taylor's Scientific Management and Max Weber's Bureaucracy. Um, the organization has goals and objectives. It's structured with jobs and activities. <clears throat> it's blueprints the organizational chart, <clears throat> and it sets an expectation for how people should behave. <clears throat> it's, the organization has a machine. It's popular with engineers. Uh, the, the common representation, business is war, or life is war. And you might notice in, in when business is war, a lot of times resources are obtained through scavenging. And um, people are seen as cogs in the machine. So uh, uh, they're just uh, really not a human element there. They're just part of the machine. Um, <clears throat> this evolved. And, and by the way, this is still around. Uh, that metaphor is still operative. But it also evolved uh, to become organization as an organism. And this was derived from the human relations movement of the 20s and 30s. And it recognized people and their needs. So the CEO was actually considered the head. And uh, it was, you know, open systems and contingency thinking were, uh, were both foundational processes. Uh, the organization as an organi organism, uh, an open system uh, uh, that it must adapt to the environment. So the, the environment became very important along with survival and evolution because it's an organism. Uh, the focus was on uh, development and people and the ecology. It was, uh, this metaphor is common for uh, HR and service roles and as well as uh, uh, organization as teams. Um, next in the evolution of things was the organization as a social system. And in this metaphor, the organization consists of interdependent parts and each, the behavior of the parts has an effect on the whole. And each subgroup has an effect on the whole, but none has an independent effect. This came from ACOG. Um, there are also there are metaphors for functions, like for example, engineers like the machine metaphor, HR employees kind of like people metaphors. Accountants tend to think in numbers. This is based on Putnam and Davis and their work in descriptive psychology. Um, each metaphor has its own language and boundaries. So problems when people uh, there are problems when people use. Uh, uh, different metaphors. In other words, they can't relate because they're thinking and speaking differently. And then also people get stuck within their own metaphors, limited by the boundaries of their metaphor. 
So metaphorical thinking uh, works as an unconscious filter. It's out of their awareness. They're not even aware that's what they're doing. And their thinking and their actions are bounded and limited by that metaphor. So if you can change the metaphor, it opens up uh, new possibilities and expands their thinking and, um, and possibly uh, reaches a point where they can solve problems they couldn't before. Um, I upload uh, a transcript of this and, uh, and the references are included in the transcript. So, thank you.